and this is the venerable 808 and not only is this the 808 but it is my 808 but unfortunately it's seen better days and it's got a few issues amongst them some cosmetic issues that you can see uh, for example we've got the incorrect screws in the top of the machine here uh, we're missing some screws in the machine um, a little bit of paint flecking off and in addition to add insult to injury we are missing the battery cover on the back of the instrument the instrument is serial number 103799 so although this uh, this machine was developed by Roland and released in around uh, 1981 according to the service manual that I've got for the machine. Uh, I think this is one of the later ed editions of the machine. They're not all exactly the same. There were some circuit modifications. It, after the first few hundred of these rolled off the assembly line, Roland did make some changes. Uh, we'll talk about those later. But in the meantime, there are more, uh, more serious things that need to be attended to. In addition to these cosmetic issues, the, the stickers missing, chipped buttons, and so on, we actually have some functional aspects that we need to take care of. In particular, the DIN sync in is not working, meaning that the only way that I can use this machine and integrate it with the rest of my instruments is by using this as the master uh, and using it to drive the tempo of the overall composition and using the start-stop functionality of this machine. However, I would like to be able to integrate it with my DAW and various other instruments and in order to do that I need to make sure that the the DIN sync input is actually functioning in addition to the DIN sync output and that's one of the things that I'm going to be addressing. So without further ado let's uh, open this baby up and see what she's made of. So the next section of the video shows the disassembly of the TR-808 starting with the removal of the side cheeks. At this point, I think it's probably worth pointing out that you don't necessarily need to remove the side cheeks in order to get access to the circuit boards. However, it does make it a lot easier to service the power supply if you do remove the side cheeks. So it's up to you whether or not you simply want to remove the top panel or start as I did by removing the side cheeks. To remove the top panel of the 808, you need to remove 10 screws. Four of these are located on the top surface. Three of these are located on the front side and three located at the rear. Do not remove the screw indicated in orange at this time. If you want to proceed as I did and remove the side cheeks first, you'll need to remove five screws from the bottom of the instrument on each side, securing the side cheeks, as well as those two screws from the top surface that were mentioned previously. In order to uh, take the machine apart and actually get into the circuitry, you need to remove uh, a number of screws obviously on the on the front uh, but what I'm going to do is actually start by removing the side panels and I'll set those aside. They are removed by taking out like, four screws uh, four screws which will release the side panels. So let's set about doing that. And you can see here as well that we've got a mixture of different screw types completely inappropriately. Uh, and, and these first ones to come out of the plastic are indeed self-tappers.
and you can see that these guys on the top need to come off as well. These are the incorrect screws. They shouldn't have a hexagonal head on them, but again, these are self tappers going into the plastic. The ones that uh, were installed here by the previous owner are a little bit larger than the original, and so they will have um, tapped larger holes than would be necessary in the plastic. And when I replace them with uh, the correct size screws, I'll have to do something about filling those holes so the screws have something to bind. Okay, why are we not able to take that out? Okay. So I stand corrected. Uh, that's actually these four screw, <laughs> these four screws, and the two in the top all need to be removed. And frankly, there should have been. No, nope, that's right. See what's binding there in a minute. Oh, it's this guy on the bottom. There we go. So these are a little scratched up. I'll see what I can do about polishing these up, cleaning them up. But you can see there's a lot of uh, areas where this machine appears to have been subject to years and years of use and abuse resulting in kind of a polishing of the surface in the these areas where sweat and whatnot has has uh, eaten away at the paint over the years that's something we'll have to address or at least attempt to address These are not self-tappers. I believe these are M3, although I'll, I'll confirm that later. That's a self-tapper. It shouldn't be. Another. Actually, correction again, those should be self-tappers. So in order to get the uh, machine apart, one needs to take off the, the knobs. They just pull right off. On many 808s, they're actually very, very loose. Uh, if you find that on your 808, the knob is much looser than it ought to be, the way you can tighten that up is simply by very, very gently prying the head of the pot apart so that it binds just a little bit more on the knob. But gently is the key word there because too much force and there is the potential to actually uh, destroy the potentiometer, which you don't want to do. Put all these things in a bag. One more potentiometer. There is supposed to be, <laughs> there is supposed to be a uh, a nut, I believe, on the pattern right uh, potential uh, switch, which is missing, and maybe even on these others. But uh, whatever whatever nuts are supposed to be there are indeed missing. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, that should be it, and we should be able to. Take the machine apart. You can see it's in two pieces, and you simply rotate the top half away from the bottom half, and these are attached. Uh, 
<clears throat> and will remain in attached. You can see I've got the instrument unplugged. This is another uh, deficiency that we'll address in that some previous owner, the DPO, has removed the ground um, from this plug, which I wouldn't recommend. One of the reasons why I wouldn't recommend removing the ground is because this instrument is just filled with CMOS circuits, integrated circuits, which are uh, famous, famously sensitive to static electricity. And you can see I'm putting on my wrist strap, which is, uh, which is grounded through this system I have here attached to my electrostatic discharge mat on my bench. And what this is doing for me, we hope, is reducing the potential for me to knock out one of the integrated circuits through unintentional electrostatic discharge. CMOS circuits are exquisitely sensitive to static electricity. And uh, I could say that in all of my years working on this type of equipment, I have only once blown a CMOS chip by electrostatic discharge. And it just happens that that incident occurred when I was working on an 808. So um, a word of caution to any of you out there who might be attempting to service your own 808, invest in one of these things, which is just a wrist strap, which will make sure that any static electricity built up in your body is dissipated to ground. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the power supply, uh, which takes voltage from the transformer and rectifies it, giving us uh, a five volt and a plus and minus 15 volt supply, which goes from here to the main board. We also have a battery backup, which uh, maintains the memory when the instrument is actually turned off. Uh, there's a, a fuse, thank goodness. Um, or is there a fuse? There is no fuse. No, there's no fuse here, but rather there's a fuse there. I knew there was a fuse in here somewhere. Um, so this is a regulated power supply, obviously. Uh, first thing we're going to do, indeed, is check the voltage is on the power supply. And given the age of this instrument being now uh, 40 years old, I think it's time for a recap. In fact, we may be able to see some evidence of wear and tear on the capacitors as we go through the instrument. But we'll look at that a little more closely later. In terms of the other aspects of the instrument, the the timing circuitry, the DIN sync aspect of that, is controlled by IC1 and IC2, which are up in this area of the board. And we'll be looking at the functionality of the circuitry and trying to determine whether or not uh, we need to replace any of the integrated circuits or other components associated with that timing. The timing is working properly when the instrument CPU is driving that timing, but it w is not taking external DIN sync timing when that is provided to it. We have uh, two main boards, well, two boards. We have the main board, uh, this board here, and the so-called voicing board, which is this board here, the second smaller board. In addition, we have the boards associated with the input-output circuitry, uh, and then there's a, another board which we can't see at the moment, which uh, has the switches on it, the switches that are used to program the instrument. Mm -hmm. 